Hello, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. I'm here to talk to you about Celestron's Power Seeker EQ 127 Reflector Telescope. This is the first telescope I bought, and I'll just go ahead right away up front and admit, when I bought this telescope, I didn't do enough research. I did look at some reviews online and read some of those, and also read the marketing and specification the details about the telescope but I was new to the hobby I didn't really have that much background knowledge and I should have got better educated so after owning the telescope there are a number of things I learned that caused me to come to the conclusion I made a mistake I shouldn't have bought this telescope I should have done more research I'm going to share 10 of those reasons with you and I created a series of brief videos sharing each of those reasons if you enjoy this video, you might want to look at some of the other reasons that I share about why you should reconsider purchasing this telescope. So let's get started. If you look at these slow motion control knobs, so what they do is they will turn the um, right ascension and declination of the telescope and basically you just manually turn these knobs. You're gonna notice something, and that is that when I turn these knobs, right away you can see this telescope is kind of jerky. Um, as you're turning these knobs, it's very jerky. So if you were actually you know, trying to observe something and look through the eyepiece and move these control knobs, the telescope is actually, there's so much shaking happening that whatever it is you're trying to look at, you won't be able to see it. And the other thing I discovered about these knobs is there's a little, basically there's a small screw that holds these knobs in place and there's a flat surface here. And what I found is even, even with that screw put on that flat surface, these knobs come loose. And so you're out in the dark and it's cold and you're struggling to find um, a target in the sky, whatever it is, and the knob comes off. And so then you're trying to get a light and trying to put this knob back on. And by the time you get the knob back on, the target in the sky that you were searching for has moved on and it's way out of your field of view. And so it's a very frustrating experience to use the uh, slow motion control knobs. One other issue with the manual slow motion control knobs is you can switch these from one side to the other. Like this one can be moved from this side to the opposite side. And the reason is if, you're, if, you know, if your telescope is positioning to see an object, eventually this runs into the manual slow motion control knob. So if you're in the middle of you know, working on looking at a target and it comes around here, all of a sudden what you're going to find is, oh, I have to remove this slow motion control knob and move it to the other side. And that's the only way that I'm going to be able to continue with the axis continuing in that same direction, which I found that to be quite inconvenient. So there's one other thing in the marketing I would just like to share with you from my experience. It says manual German equatorial mount with its slow motion altitude rod, the German equatorial mount, allows you to navigate the sky with ease, find celestial objects quickly, and follow them smoothly and accurately as they appear to drift across the night sky. Well, that's misleading because um, basically this telescope, these, these manual control knobs, they're not very smooth, really. It's like I was explaining earlier. These, these manual control knobs, it's not as smooth. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if you watch what happens as you're moving this, this whole thing is shaking. When you turn that knob, this whole telescope is shaking like this. So there's nothing smooth about using these knobs to locate and then follow um, an, a target across the sky. And here's the other thing I would say. If you wanted to, just another analogy, if you had a lot of numbers to crunch, let's say you had to calculate a whole, body, a whole lot of data to produce some final result. So you had, you know, 100 calculations. Well, would you get out your paper, your notepad, and your calculator and sit down with a pen and paper and do that? Not many people I know would do it. Why not? 
because we have Excel, we have other, you know, software that does this type of calculation work. And what we usually would do is we just go, we go into that software program, we'd put our data in there and put the formula, formulas in and let it do it. Some people now might use AI to do math or ask Siri to do the calculation for them. But we're not into doing things manually, not many of us. I'm, I'm sure there are some people who like to sit and just do a whole bunch of formulas on paper and nothing against someone who enjoys that. But most people I know, they don't want to do that. They want, what's the easier way to do it? Someone automated this. Why do I have to sit and spend hours or a long time crunching numbers? I can just put it in a spreadsheet or I can use an online tool to assist me. Well, this whole concept of locating and learning the night sky and finding objects with a telescope like this is kind of ridiculous because the, the, the universe is a vast place and the distance between targets you're wanting to locate, if it's not a planet, that you can actually look up in the sky and see that planet because it's pretty bright or the moon, which is easy to find. But if you're looking for, you know, a nebula or a galaxy cluster or whatever that target is, it's not easy to find those. You have to be dead on to find those targets. And so trying to take manual control knobs and move a telescope, you know, as, as you're looking for something across the sky, it's not really realistic. What people do who are u using you know, the automated tools, they're going to use software to do what's called plate solving and or they're going to have a go-to mount. They're going to align that mount initially, polar align it, align it to some stars, and then once their mount is aligned, they're going to use a hand controller and punch in. I want to navigate to, I want to slew to um, M45 or some other target. And that go-to mount's going to move there, it's going to slew there because it knows where the objects are at in the sky. And then you can do what's called plate solving. If your mound is not 100% perfectly aligned, but it gets close to the target, you can use software to plate solve, which is looking at a database of where the locations of all these uh, targets in the sky, all these stars and constellations, and then it, based upon what it finds, in your field of view will reposition your telescope to that target. So that's the reality. This idea of, it sounds, it sounds exciting uh, when you don't really understand it yet, but I, I don't know very many people, there are probably some people, they're, they're way smarter than me. They're able to like learn where are all the um, key celestial targets at and they can kind of commit that to memory and they know they could they could go to one target and then from there they could work their way over to the other target. There's not many people who can do that or who want to do that. So I guess what I'm just trying to say is the idea of, you know, the average person is going to get a telescope like this and learn the night sky and be able to find objects with this telescope and go from, let's say, you know, they're looking at a galaxy cluster and they want to move to the constellation of Orion. That's not going to be as easy as that sounds. So, you know, it's marketing. It's, it's clever marketing that sounds good, but the reality is not many people are going to. Well, I hope you found hearing my experience with this telescope helpful. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I created a series of these videos just to keep them brief. You could look at the ones that you're interested in where I talk about the different reasons that I really wouldn't recommend this telescope. You might want to check out some of the others and they're in the description of this video. If you enjoy videos of this type dealing with astronomy and astrophotography, I also encourage you to subscribe to my channel, leave any comments you have after you watch the video. I always enjoy hearing the viewers' feedback, and I'm wishing you clear skies.